stormtroopers. It's Leo Alderbald here. I'm going to try and keep this video a little quiet because you can probably tell by the way I'm dressed, I'm like G.I. Joe. I'm actually out hunting at the moment. I'm smoking in my little Peterson. This is my hunting pipe. It's the Peterson Army Mount. Um, stem comes out really easily. Fits in a pocket nicely. I'm smoking some Mellow Virginia, which is a pretty common over-the-counter blend here in the UK. And I'm just waiting for the morning mist to clear. Just show you around. I'm going to regret lifting the camera now because I had it propped just so on the sight of my rifle uh, between my rifle and my flask down there. And I ain't going to get the bucket back in now, I'm sure. No. Let's have a go. see how we get on. So this is the third in my series on hunting in Britain and um, so this episode's about the law. So I'll start off by covering a little bit about the firearms regulations here. As you know here in Britain our firearms regulations are probably some of the tightest in the world. Um, no, I won't go into explaining as to why that is. You can Google those things, but um, uh, you know, uh, basically after a number of school shootings um, and, and um, things like that, you know, um, most firearms have been outlawed, with the exception of sporting rifles, hunting rifles, shotguns, obviously, um, things like that. But um, the bottom line is, in order to get a firearm certificate in the first place. For the rifle that you're currently perched upon, for example, um, you need a reason to want to own that firearm, and you need to justify that to the uh, whichever is your local constabulary. So, um, first of all, you need a reason. The second is, uh, second thing is, you need um, you need land where you can shoot. Now, I covered a bit about that in my last video of this series. Um, you don't need to own the land yourself. Um, it can be owned by somebody else, as in the case of the land that I'm currently on. But you need to be able to basically go to the cops and say, I'd like to get a hunting rifle. Um, here's a map of the land. I want to shoot deer on it. Therefore, you can only apply on your application then for a rifle of a calibre suitable to shoot whatever quarry it is that you're actually going for. So if you're only going for rabbits, you're only going to get a 22. You're not going to be granted a license for anything bigger. Now, the, um, the processing time generally for a firearm certificate in this country is about three months. Um, during which time, you obviously need to declare any criminal record, any uh, mental health issues. Um, if, even if you've suffered from depression or anything like that, um, the police will do background checks on you. Um, you need to obviously, as I say, specify on that application um, why you want a firearm in the first place and be able to justify that. Um, and then once you've got your certificate, um, then it's valid for five years. Um, I'll show you what one looks like. Now, bear in mind, uh, I have to, as anybody does over here, carry this around with me every time I go out anywhere with a firearm, be it a shotgun or a hunting rifle or whatever. So, cover up my personal information there. 
but that's basically what I have to carry around with me. And that's two, that's uh, two different certificates, one for shotgun, one for a rifle. So it's a bit of a hassle to get a, to get that in the first place, but once you've got it, you've got it. Then you can start building up the amount of land that you have um, your shooting permissions for. Um, and away you go. Now, that's a little bit about the firearm stuff anyway. So, I'll just run you through a couple of things to do with our shooting season. Now, I'm going to talk here about deer, because that's what I'm here to do. Um, we've got six deer species in this country. That is six free-roaming wild deer species. Only two of which are actually native, which are the roe deer, which is what I'm coming for this morning, and the red deer. Now, the other four deer species, the fallow deer, the seeker deer, the muntjac, and the Chinese water deer. Um, each species has its own particular season, in general, in general. Now we're on the 6th of August right now, and uh, a couple of days ago on the 1st of August was, uh, was when the, the stags came into season. And that's the big deer, the, the seeker, the red, and the fallow just the males for those came into season a few days ago. Now the roe bark, um, obviously the male of the roe deer, he's been in season for a while, since April. And at the moment, it's the rut. I don't want to shoot a big stag are in the rut because they're smelly and the meat's not so good it's loaded with testosterone a roebuck not so bad but basically all of our um, deer seasons our shooting seasons are tied in around the breeding cycle of that particular deer species with the exception of a muntjac deer now the muntjac deer will breed all year round um, so um, you can actually shoot those all year round as a result. And similarly with the Chinese water deer, because the male and the female of that species are so difficult to tell apart, the male and female actually have the same season. But other than that, um, the way it generally works here is when the male's in season to shoot, the female is out of season. And when the female's in season, the male's out of season. And that's basically really to um, to try and minimise the stress on the, on a population, um, to minimise the chances of um, shooting the wrong animal, leaving a, an orphan, for example. The only issue with that is that um, once you've got your firearm certificate in here. Uh, over here in this country. That's it pretty much. You can go out and start shooting. There isn't any training that anybody must undertake um, in order to be able to go out and shoot. Which I think is a bit a bit silly. We have a, train, a training program over here um, which is very very good and it's basically an intensive course that um, that basically it, you, it, you, when you pass um, you get a certificate and it basically says that you know your difference between the deer species between the males and the females uh, you know how to identify health problems in them um, and so on and so forth and all of those things that I think um, any responsible hunter should know anyway but there isn't actually any law that says you must have that
pretty much all I'm going to cover in this video. Because you can probably tell I'm a little distracted right now. I'm keeping my eyes open. I've got my little buttalo call here. Yes, I'm actually hoping that uh, when this mist lifts a little, as it's beginning to do, then uh, a roebuck is going to be attracted by that call and come out of the woodlands over there where I might be able to get a shot and maybe refill my freezer and get some more venison built on on the go. Anyway, you folks take it easy. I will see you all again soon. Uh, and if I think of anything that needs adding to this series, I'll do a, a number four. But until the next time, take it easy.